We had initial jobless claims falling by 29,000 last week. Of course, a uh, highly anticipated jobs number out of the U.S. yesterday. It is expected that we could see unemployment rise to 9.8% from 9.7%. What is your view? Of course, we had the ADP number out yesterday showing 20,000 jobs were lost in February from a revised loss of 60,000 in January. Uh, yes, uh, I think some of these numbers are a bit skewed because of the weather they were having in the U.S. in terms of claims, etc. People couldn't make it to the offices privately, and so that might have skewed the numbers a little bit. But we don't expect uh, the employment situation in the U.S. to improve anytime soon, especially if you look at the productivity numbers that came out. Workers are much more productive, so unless you have a massive increase in GDP with this increase in productivity, you would not have uh, had any improvement in employment. So we do expect an increase in unemployment coming through this time around. We also had some retail data out of the U.S. yesterday, not as bad as people had initially thought. Consumer stocks also enjoying gains on the back of this but it is said that the bad weather as you alluded to is affecting uh, the mood in the US at this stage but are you confident the US consumer is starting to gain some traction in terms of recovery? Uh, we've not even looked at those housing numbers the housing numbers dropped like about seven percent and expected a, a slight improvement and uh, that obviously was scary but I mean as I mentioned there were these massive storms in the US over the last month in February and that would have obviously skewed every number in terms of uh, mm -hmm. consumption in terms of uh, you know housing sales car sales as well bad weather would be enough reason for me to stay at home so yeah. definitely okay looking at uh, the Bank of Japan and they're saying that they want to ease uh, the monetary policy uh, rules even further to try and get the yen to pull back against the dollar because the yen has been really strong it's been affecting exporters mm -hmm. as well in that country what do you make of the fact that some countries are hiking interest rates such as Australia and then other countries are opting for further easing of monetary policy well it's also, also to do with the situation in which they actually went into the crisis I mean Japan had been effectively at zero interest rates for the majority of the last decade or so and so there weren't wasn't much they could actually do to ease interest rates as they went through the crisis and they actually have deflation there for a large point, part of time so their real interest rate is positive even though their actual interest rate may be zero uh, so they've always had a problem uh, strangely enough if you look at their actual fiscal situation they're as bad as Greece probably worse than many other countries in the world and uh, I mean that would obviously weaken the yen, but the fact that the Japanese consumer is such a massive saver in the world economy means that the yen is always going to be strong and that the weaker um, global situation just made the yen even stronger considering uh, the fact that they were a saving nation to begin with. The, they are not going to have a recovery like the Australians have had a recovery or we are having a recovery at the moment. Um, they are facing <coughs> competition from all, many parts of the world. Their advantages in terms of being the best car manufacturers in the world has been diminished now that Toyota has gone down. They're facing competition from Korea, they're facing competition from China. So they don't have as good an outlook and they also have a bad fiscal situation. But that being said, the yen is still being extremely strong for them and it's also hurting their economy. We're looking at the euro dollar. We've also seen interesting plays in the dollar easing ahead of those, the job data that we alluded to earlier. But what is interesting is we had a, a vote of confidence for Greece yesterday when we saw Greek bonds, a uh, good appetite for that, 5 billion euros worth. And now uh, many analysts out there are saying that Greece is actually of no need of aid because there is an appetite for its bonds and it's for, for its debt. Uh, yes, I mean, if they're able to actually cut the spending as they need to cut the spending, that depends. I mean, you look at the union action. Someone took over the financial ministry last year, yesterday. I think the at a union city and the financial ministry couldn't let anyone in. But if they are able to get the spending cuts through, they will have no problem actually borrowing money, especially if they're offering the higher interest rates that they are offering, because their risk of default is virtually zero. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the, the European Union is not going to let Greece fall. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense for them to do that. Mm -hmm. So you are going to get a lot of demand for their bonds, especially the higher interest rate than you would get, for instance, in Germany, etc. And the, because the risk is not going to be so much greater than de Germany defaulting. Uh, looking at the euro dollar play, of course the euro has come under significant pressure as a result of all the debt worries that have emerged from that region. But some would argue that it's not such a bad thing to see the euro coming under slight pressure because it's going to help uh, the countries in that region uh, regarding exports and uh, it perhaps could even help the whole world. What do you think of that? Uh, maybe not the whole world. I think it's uh, the US is pre pretty much uh, fighting its situation right now where the Chinese will not let their currency appreciate where the, the Europeans also have this uh, this gift in a way of the Greece uh, situation actually weakening their currency. So they, they were aiming in an extent. I mean, Barack Obama was saying that he wanted to have export jobs created by the US to actually you know, fund uh, the, the job creation in the US. That's not going to happen when the euro is so weak mm -hmm. against the uh, 
uh, dollar and the pound is even weaker and the there's no chance of the remnant be uh, massively revaluing itself in terms soon. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's negative for the US and positive for the European Union at the moment. Of course the dynamics have changed considerably uh, regarding currencies but also when you look at the RAND we're currently sitting at around 748 to the dollar so we have strength I mean last week Thursday I remember we hit 789 so we're seeing dramatic strength coming through on the RAND front but no surprise there we're still, we're still seeing quite a lot of foreign inflows but how much longer can we see this RAND, RAND strength for? Hopefully not too much longer because consider the fact we are strengthening against the dollar, we are strengthening against everyone else. So we are actually strengthening doubly against the euro and even stronger against the pound because the pound is even weaker than the euro for the last couple of days. And that's a bad situation because if you think of the euro area as a whole, I'm talking about the entire euro area, it's actually our biggest trading partner. And if we are actually weakening against them, it means that our exports are coming, becoming more expensive in that region and therefore we're becoming less competitive. So I'm not one of those people that says that the RAND should just go to wherever it wants to. There should be some kind of uh, effort to try and weaken it a little bit, especially if you consider the fact that we're going to be suffering so greatly when it comes to exports, etc. cetera. Uh, looking at the corporate side of things, we've had a lot of results out. Viv, uh, anything in particular that stuck out for you? And I think also if you could just give us your view on the Arcelor Mittal saga that's playing out. I think the Oslo Mutual saga was quite a, a bit of uh, news out there. I think the, the market overreacted a bit at the actual release of the numbers because there had been just such pent up demand to sell the stock. They couldn't do it for like three days, four days actually. And so when it actually happened, people just did it a bit too much. Um, now that we, we have a clear view of the situation, we know that the minister is involved. There's probably going to be a negotiated solution. Oslo Mutual is going to pay a higher price, but not as bad as by basically buying it at the market price uh, for its iron ore. And that will actually push the stock up a bit and we've seen the stock move up quite nicely yesterday. Um, news out this week here, we saw numbers from uh, Standard Bank yesterday that obviously the banks have been a little worse than we've been expecting, but generally I think the ba our banking sector is quite strong and we're doing quite well. Um, I think looking forward into the future, we just got to make sure that no other situation comes through, like the Greek situation. Remember, there's the pigs, it's not just the G's. There's also Portugal, there's Italy, there's Spain, and there's Ireland as well to so we'll look at. And if you consider the situation here, that if you had it out of all the, the PIs and the, the G's, basically the pig, they would not come to half the size of the S's. The Portugal, Ireland, and Greece situations, if you double them in terms of their, uh, the problems that they have there, they would not be as big as Spain is if mm -hmm. that has happened. And uh, so we just sort of make hope that nothing else comes out of Europe at the moment and that should be okay for us in the Seems future. Seems like we have a lot of headwinds to face. That's Thank true. you very much for your time.